It's interesting, of course, when you look at Asian Buddhism, um, all of those societies were hierarchical. I mean, none of them was democratic. They were all patriarchal, even though the Buddha himself, I think, wasn't patriarchal. But inevitably, as Buddhism become, became institutionalized, it took those forms. And that's part of the challenge now that Buddhism comes to the West. Um, about half a century ago, Gary Snyder said something very, very pertinent, I think. He said, the mercy of the West has been social revolution. The mercy of the East has been insight into the basic self or void, the emptiness of the self. He said, we need both. And that's one interesting way to understand the coming together, right? When you look at the Abrahamic traditions, which is the other source of the West, we, they have something extremely important that Buddhism lacks, this prophetic emphasis on social justice. And you bring that together with the Greek tradition, the realization we can transform. What you get, of course, is our evolutionary concern, especially in the modern area, to transform society to make it a better, more socially just society, right? Social justice, that's not a Buddhist concept. The Buddhist concept is, of course, um, dukkha, suffering. It's all about overcoming suffering. Uh, but because Buddhism in all Asian societies, none of them is democratic traditionally until the modern era, right? So Buddhism, in order to survive, it couldn't threaten the rulers. It had to keep a low profile. Uh, it, it had to emphasize, okay, personal dukkha, but it couldn't challenge the institutionalized, the collective dukkha. But now that Buddhism comes to the West, then we can ask more questions. We can ask in our social engagement, well, let's look not only at individually produce dukkha from my ways of thinking. Let's look at the dukkha imposed on millions of children because of unjust social institutions, you see. Uh, so there are new possibilities. Uh, in the same way that I think the West can help Buddhism develop in certain ways, I think we can also see that the Western emphasis on social transformation has been very much limited by the fact that when you have a revolution, the new people, what you end up with is that one gang of thugs is replaced by another. Because we haven't had enough of a realization in the West that we have to transform ourselves. In other words, if the emphasis of the West is on social transformation, I think it's been limited because we haven't also realized the importance of individual personal transformation. It's not only creating a society where the structures are so good, the institutions are so good that no one has to make an effort to be good. No, you need both. We need to realize that they have to go together. And that's one of the really very exciting things that's going on right now. Mm -hmm.